friends, neighbors, and bridge builders. Thank you for being part of this beautiful, inspiring, and memorable celebration. We have been holding this event for over 14 years. Each year, we continue to build on the strong foundation of our communities by inviting more beauty and richness into our fold. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya 'ala Hayya ala al-salaah Hayya ala al-falaah Hayya ala al-falaah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Between our divisions, I reach out to you. Will you reach out to me with all of our voices and all of our visions? Friends, we could make such sweet harmony, building bridges. Between our divisions, between our divisions, I reach out to you. Will you reach out to me? I reach out to you. Will you reach out to me? With all of our voices, with all of our voices, and all of our visions, and all. Sweet harmony, friends, we could make such sweet harmony. Building bridges between our divisions, I reach out to you. Will you reach out to? Welcome, everyone, to this annual Thanksgiving celebration. Welcome to Pax Christi, 
My name is Michael Byron. I'm the pastor here, and it is an absolute honor to welcome the many, many faiths and the many, many voices here to do something that I dare to say has never been more in need than right, right now, than to gather people of many faiths, many traditions, many cultures to gather as one and to celebrate who we are as human beings in the sight of God. So thank you and welcome. Uh, my role here is pretty, pretty quick. Um, simply to say thanks for coming and to introduce to you Sarah Steichen Stiles, the Interfaith Planning Team member who will lead us through the rest of our evening together. So thank you. Thank you, Father Byron. I am Sarah Steichen Stiles, and I am one of the board members of the Interfaith Circle. Behalf, on behalf of the Circle, thank you for joining us this evening. I was a sophomore at Eden Prairie High School on September 11, 2001. I was sitting in my Algebra II math class when I watched the planes crash into the Twin Towers. Do you remember or recall where you were? I left school that day with much confusion. And as the news played, my optimism that this wasn't the end of the world as I knew it started to fade. And I said my final prayers as I went to bed that evening, not necessarily expecting to wake up the next day. Fear had set in. And at that time, Eden Prairie was fairly homogenous. But I stand here nearly 18 years later, and this city has changed. The various languages spoken around the lakes are different. The restaurants and apartment hallways smell more exotic. The clothing fashion is more diverse. Even the sports played in the parks have expanded from soccer and baseball to pickleball and cricket. After I left Eden Prairie High School, I went to St. Olaf College, also fairly homogenous. And I studied abroad and was so challenged and ignited by seeing the world. I was in Cairo for a month during Ramadan, and I spent six weeks in India studying religions and spent months in other parts of the world. I remember a friend saying, you know, it's so interesting. The most extraordinary part of this experience has been witnessing the ordinary parts of these people's everyday lives. It was watching the discipline of the five days of prayer in Cairo, the love and familial gatherings around food in Greece, the connection to the land in Guatemala, and the zenful peace of daily walks through the Chinese gardens. I flew home with my faith challenged, my ignorant optimism for the world saddened. But my curiosity for how people lived was greatly deepened. It is purely a joy for me to say now that the Eden Prairie High School students do not need to wait for a study abroad program to feel and experience an enriching cultural experience. They can reach their hand out to the desk next to them in math class. They can share a swing at the park. They can walk across the apartment hallway or the neighborhood street. And they can interact with someone that shares a different faith tradition or cultural background than their own. Right here in their city, in our community, we can see different ways of approaching everyday, ordinary life and know that we have a choice to create the kind of life that we want. And there is not just one singular way to make a good life. There are many, and we need each other to teach us and to inspire us to build it together. The Interfaith Circle began with the vision of Reverend Trish Sullivan Vani in response to 9-11. She gathered with a group of others from the southwest suburbs concerned about the Islamophobia and fear rising in the community in response to the 9-11 attacks. The group included laymen and religious leaders from various faith traditions, sharing a common concern that invisible walls of fear were building and the need for creating understanding was calling. So the first interfaith community Thanksgiving celebration was in 2002. We've taken a few years off here and there, but we've continued to organize celebrations, conversations, picnics, and even bus tours to different faith communities, all in an effort to connect neighbors and friends to increase peace and understanding. 
It's hard to deny that we live in a broken world these days. The anxiety brought by the social scoreboard of social media, the pull to be inside our phones rather than in our hearts, the distrust and confusion of the daily news, the shootings, the threats, the protests, and political divides. We live in a broken world because we live in a human world, and humans make mistakes. We get it wrong sometimes, and far too often we close doors and cut ties between ourselves and those around us because of short-sighted distrust and unfounded fear. As my husband's hero, and let's just and many of us in this room, uh, Mr. Fred Rogers once said, "How sad is it that we give up on people that are just like us?" But Mr. Rogers and all of us here tonight, that we humans can do something that is much deeper, more subtle perhaps, but much more powerful. We also have this beautiful gift to say, "I'm sorry," to forgive. And to love one another as our faith traditions have called us. Barbara Brown Taylor has said it so well, so I'm going to quote her: "Across all of our differences, we come into the world more or less the same way, through a human being. We breathe the same air and depend on the same earth for our sustenance. We all weep salty tears and we bleed red blood. And though we find different things funny, we laugh and we sneeze in humorous ways." But up to a certain age, we are so curious about each other. Someone has to teach us to fear each other. None of us is born with a belief system or a worldview. We acquire those from our elders along with our DNA. This does not diminish the importance of our religion. However, it does establish a certain priority. What we have most in common is not our religion but our humanity. Which is recognizable across class, continent, and color, unless someone goes to great pains to blind us to one another. Now, back in high school, there were a lot of quotes and things taped and written all across my binder, so it's no surprise that I keep using quotations as I talk to you tonight. But that's what we're here to do. We are here to share what inspires us. I'm a professional dancer, and it's become a common phrase for us to use before walking on the stage to remind one another that there is nothing to prove, only to share. And so tonight we're here to share. And as the Interface Circle met this past spring to begin planning this event, the words once again of Robert Brown Taylor, an Episcopal priest, inspired our theme for tonight. They are from her book Holy Envy: Finding God in the Faith of Others. And I'd like to just leave you with these words. Part of my ongoing priesthood is to find the bridges between my faith and the faith of other people, so that those of us who draw water from wells on different sides of the river can still get together from time to time, making the whole area safer for our children. Thank you for being here with us this evening and for building bridges with us. The world and the community needs each and every one of you. My name is Nancy Dunlevy, and I have with me here Rose Chu and Cindy Porter. We are members of Soka Gakkai International, a Buddhist community dedicated to building a culture of peace and deep respect for the dignity of life. We are very grateful for this opportunity. To join your beautiful interfaith Thanksgiving celebration with the theme of building bridges in a broken world. Buddhism, since its inception almost 3,000 years ago, has focused on the importance of dialogue as the foundation for transforming one's own heart and the hearts of others. We offer the following quotes from Daisaku Ikeda, current president of Soka Gakkai International. To have faith in the power of dialogue is to believe in the promise of humanity. Impartial dialogue is possible only when one is willing to look at things from the other person's perspective. Dialogue is not possible if one disdains or discriminates against the other person. It is naturally engendered when one believes in, respects, 
and reveres the worth inherent in the other person. Another critical requirement is seeing the humanity of the other person and recognizing it as the same as yours. In other words, you must have the ability to put yourself in the other person's shoes and empathize with their pain as if it were your own. We must not be silent. Permitting good to be silenced plays into the hands of evil. We must not give up the effort of dialogue regardless of the magnitude of the crisis. Let us continue the work of pricking holes in the shrouds of darkness, always focusing on the long term and rising above the emotions of the trying moment. We must exert all our strength of spirit to press forward with dialogue. The Buddha's faith in the power of language was absolute. If more people were to pursue dialogue in an equally unrelenting manner, the inevitable conflicts of human life would surely find easier resolution. Prejudice would yield to empathy, and war would give way to peace. Genuine dialogue results in the transformation of opposing viewpoints, changing them from wedges that drive people apart into bridges that link them together. The human qualities necessary to put this principle into practice go beyond more diplomacy. The task requires an elevated state of life. As Nichiren Buddhists practicing within the SGI, our form of prayer consists of chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, which you can see up here. This translates roughly to dedicated, dedicating one's life to the universal law of cause and effect, as in the lotus flower. This is our means to elevate our state of life, as talked about in the last quote, and also to be in rhythm with the universe. We invite you to listen or to join us in a few moments of chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. <laughs> Nam yo ho renge kyo 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 Nam yo Thank you very much. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Hello and good evening everyone. I am Jatinder Singh and this lovely lady is Gurshin Kaur. We are from Sikh community over here and it feels fabulous to be over here. You know what a vibrant evening so far. And we thank you for making us part of all this. We, tr we truly are. Last week, we celebrated 550th anniversary of the founder of our faith, Guru Nanak Sahib Ji. And today we are going to share one of the most important message, the principle that we use in our spiritual journey, known as the oneness. Let's listen to the hymn first. It's a short hymn. Aval Allah Noor Upaya Aval Allah Noor Upaya Kudrat Ke Sab Bande Kudrat Ke Sab Bande Aval Allah Noor Upaya Aval Allah Kudrat ke sab bande, 
कुदरत के सब बंदे एक नूर ते सब जग उपजया एक नूर ते सब जग उपजया कौन भले को मंदे कौन भले को मंदे अवल अल्लाह नूर उपाया अवल अल्लाह नूर उपाया कुदरत के सब बंदे कुदरत के सब बंदे लोगा परम न पूलो पाई लोगा परम न पूलो पाई खालिक खलक खलक में खालिक खालिक खलक खलक में खालिक पुर रयो सब ठाई थी अवल अल्लाह नूर उपाया अवल अल्लाह नूर उपाया कुदरत के सब बंदे कुदरत के सब बंदे कुदरत के सब बंदे कुदरत के सब बंदे दिस हाइम इज फ्रॉम आवर होली स्क्रिप्चर गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब जी and it's written by is composed by saint kabir ji and saint kabir ji uses an arabic lingo to refer to the one to the god as allah isn't it great the scripture of one faith includes the composition of another faith and uses the language of the other faiths that's that shows inclusivity that's an act of building bridges isn't it the the message of this hymn is first the god the one uses his power and creates the one light and then through that light all the human beings are created if it's the same light through which the entire world sprang upon then why do we say and it's the same power it's the same supreme source through which we all are created then why do we just based upon one's birth one's beliefs or faith you know give them a label of a good bad or evil the author warns us it cautions us that do not be in any doubt that where is god who we are he says the creator is in within the creation the creator is in everything it is everything so we all are part of that one just like a potter uses a same clay to make different kinds of pots the creator has used the same light to create the entire world the all of the humanity all of the beings the pots look different but there is nothing wrong with that that's okay therefore the message is that we should love all the humanity and see god in every heart without any bias of race caste religion faith inclinations or ideas therefore feel the bliss within let's listen to the one verse of haim once again aval allah noor upaya aval allah noor upaya kudrat ke sab bande कुदरत के सब बंदे अवल अल्लाह नूर उपाया अवल अल्लाह नूर उपाया कुदरत के सब बंदे कुदरत के सब बंदे थैंक यू वंस अगेन Oh my god oh my god 
Verily, I invoke thee and supplicate before thy threshold, asking thee that all thy mercies may descend upon these souls, specialize them for thy favor and thy truth. O Lord, unite and bind together the hearts, and join them in accord all the souls, and exhilarate the spirits through the signs of thy sanctity and oneness. O Lord, make these faces radiant through the light of thy oneness. Strengthen the loins of thy servants in the service of thy kingdom. O Lord, thou possessor of infinite mercy, O Lord of forgiveness and pardon, forgive our sins, pardon our shortcomings, and cause us to turn to the kingdom of thy clemency, invoking the kingdom of might and power. Humble at thy shrine and submissive before the glory of thine evidences. O Lord God, make us as waves of the sea, as flowers of the garden united, agreed through the bounties of thy love. O Lord, dilate the breasts through the signs of thy oneness and make all mankind as stars shining from the same height of glory as perfect fruits growing upon thy tree of life. Verily, thou art the almighty, the self-subsistent, the giver, the forgiving, the pardoner, the omniscient, the one creator, Abdul Baha.
Assalamu alaikum, peace to you all. Welcome to this beautiful celebration of our gratitude to God and unity within our community. My special thanks to IFC and Pax Christi for providing a platform for this. Today we have three mosques for Eden Prairie residents. When more than a decade ago we had no mosque here and we needed a place to pray, Pax Christi provided weekly Friday prayer space and weekly family nights and for our big eight celebrations. We never forget the generosity of our friends at Pax. Thank you. At this point, we'll play a small poetry related to Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. Enjoy. point, I will ask Dr. Saudi Saudi to come to the stage and share a few thoughts about this occasion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and God's mercy and blessings to all. My, our history includes refugees who really immigrated out uh, to avoid mistreatment and injustice in, in Mecca when Muhammad, peace be upon him, was spreading the word of God. People were really mistreated. And the people of Medina welcomed them and opened their doors for the oppressed to be have safe haven the, to show a great empathy. In addition to that, the immigrants or the refugees lived in Medina, considered it home. They contributed to Medina, contributed to the defense of Medina, and when they died, they died in Medina, and Medina became home. When the Muslims became stronger and they took over Mecca, the place where, uh, where they were prosecuted, they showed forgiveness. They showed forgiveness to the people who mistreated them. And at the same time, after opening Medina, they, after opening Mecca, they went back to Medina because Medina was home. And it is home to protect and to thrive and spend all your love in. Thank you very much.
Good evening. My name is Julie and I serve on the PROP Board of Directors. On behalf of all of us at PROP, we thank the Interfaith Circle for their leadership and many efforts to bring people together, especially for this special evening. And thank you too for everyone for being here. PROP was started 48 years ago by a small group of community members who noticed there were neighbors who needed a bit of help. The first small food shelf opened up out of someone's garage. Today, PROP serves over 1,000 households in Eden Prairie and Chanhassen by providing both food and emergency financial support when a family is facing an unexpected crisis in their lives. Almost half of our 3,500 clients are children. A growing number are senior citizens who, though they worked their entire lives, did not retire with enough resources to cover their daily needs. When someone is facing an unexpected illness or death in their family, the loss of a job, a change in a relationship, or some other unforeseen emergency, PROP's goal is to help them return to stability and self-sufficiency just as quickly as possible so they can live full and meaningful lives. But this is only possible through the generous support of our Eden Prairie community. 100% of the offering received this evening will go directly to help our neighbors in need this holiday season. To prevent a family from being evicted because they are behind on their rent due to an emergency, to provide employment coaching to a neighbor who has been laid off unexpectedly from a job, to purchase healthy food for a senior citizen or children, to help pay a utility bill in these cold winter months, to provide a youth scholarship for a child so they are able to participate in the same enrichment activities as their peers and so much more. We are grateful Grateful to all of your support of PROP all year long, but especially this evening. Thank you. Thank you for caring about your neighbors. Thank you for changing lives. Thank you for making PROP everything that it is and will be in the coming year. We are so grateful for your generosity. When the hungry are fed, the naked are clothed, and children living on the street are given a home. When believers truly practice what we pray, then the world will be transformed. When the lonely are loved, the frightened are free. And women everywhere are treated equally When believers truly practice what we pray Then the kingdom of God will be
I mocked Yeshaya with the bright path, the path of joy. The bright path offers a series of ancient, profoundly effective, yet simple techniques based on praise, gratitude, love, and compassion. This purely mechanical practice has no belief, therefore does not interfere with anyone's religion or spirituality. The focus this evening is on building bridges, being that living bridge that you truly are. Pierre Desjardins said, we're a spiritual being having a human experience. If he was to change one word in what he said, everything changes. Instead of saying, we're a spiritual being, he could have said, we are the spiritual being having a human experience, meaning we're not separate from the underlying source of all reality. That bridge to and for everything. But how do we experience that? We simply bypass the mind and look within because inside of each one of us is a still, silent, open space that goes forever. A place where time and space have no relevance and no existence. A place where fear has no meaning. A place eternal and alive a place so real and accessible, all you have to do is recognize it. Recognize that living bridge that you truly are. It's my experience and part of the human condition that whatever we focus on grows in our life. When we take that 18 inch journey from our head to our heart and experience that still silent place within, the one we already are, that grows in our life. When we keep taking that 18-inch journey to our heart and experience that one we are, the awareness and experience of that grows in our life. That living bridge that we already are becomes more alive. I invite you right now, just for a moment, to let go of that mental chatter and experience that still silent place within that living bridge that you already are, right here, right now.
I would like to start by expressing my profound gratitude for being part of this warm, caring, and delightful community. I take great pride in calling Minnesota my home. Thank you to Father Byron and Parks Christi community for hosting the celebration this year. This is where it all started, as Sarah mentioned, way back in 2002. After a break of a few years, we are simply overjoyed to be back at Parks. Thank you to Sam, Steve, and Salim for handling all the technology elements. And thank you to Anya Adam for taking pictures. She's the young lady who's been walking around taking pictures. Thank you to the Interfaith Circle team. It keeps on growing bigger, stronger, and rich in thought, ideas, and determination. 